has to issue Ms. Ross with a certificate of purchase. Ms. Ross now wants to drive with these cucumbers from St. George to Bonnets. Mary also, according to the act, has to give her a certificate of conveyance. So in other words, Mary is selling 100 pounds of cucumbers for argument's sake. She has to register as a small farmer. She has to issue a certificate of purchase to Miss Ross. And she also has to give Miss Ross uh, a certificate of conveyance. And all of these things are required. If they're not done, you can be fined 5,000 or imprisoned for three years. This was passed in in November last year, it, got, it gets worse. Now Mary hasn't sold the, the cucumbers. She's transporting them. She is transporting them. And I quote from the same act, section 12.3, where an owner, Mary is the owner of agriculture products, is transporting by vehicle or other means his own agricultural products in this case, Mary, shall be required, if requested to do so by a warden, to produce proof of ownership of the agricultural products. And can you believe that chapter ends? Who boasts about St. George being the bread basket of Barbados and his roots with agriculture can sit down in the Senate and agree to something like this? It gets worse. But I'm not going to take up the whole night. It, is, it gets worse. It is a total nonsense in parts. And meant to frustrate small backyard farmers who predominate in St. George North. But I have no doubt that the people of St. George North will ensure that Glenn Clark sends him into oblivion once and for all. And with that, I want to invite Glenn Clark your representative, who shall be returned for the sixth time whenever the elections are called. Glenn Clark. Come to Glenn. Good night to the people of Lewis State. Good night to the people of St. George North. Good night to my supporters. Good night, good night, good night. Special good night to my team manager, Emerson Teddy Howard. And my team, Bison, Coobert, and all the others. I want to thank all those persons who have rallied behind me over the last 23 years. It is true, it is true that we are doing exceptionally well in St. George. It is true that we have won every box in the last 23 years except one, and we will win this box next election as God willing. I want to thank you. I want to thank the people of Lewis State especially and Parish Land. Thank the people of Charro Bridge and Salters who have rallied behind our team. And this year, I must say that we will do even better than the last 23 years. This box, which is called GF1, has been a DLP stronghold for a long time. Even dating back to the days of Dowden. But what has happened over the past 50 years of DLP rule? What has happened over the past 50 years? We do not have very little, we have very little to show 
that was done, done by the Democratic Labour Party. I must say to you tonight that despite whatever, we have had great people who have followed us. And I speak tonight of a man called New Brand, who single-handedly introduced me over 22 years ago to this constituency, New Brand. And I want to single out him because he was a tower of strength. And of course, there's also the alleys across the road, Marcia, and the Pope's above there, and of course, my good friend Shirley, and of course, my family, the Farleys. I want to thank all of them. I want to thank tonight and thank my leader, who will be the next Prime Minister of Barbados. I want to say to you tonight that over the past 10 years in particular, we have seen May gone through the hottest fire. But she is the finest medal tonight. And she will be a great Prime Minister. She is not only a bright person, she is compassionate, she is hardworking, and she has united this party and bring it to a point where we build the next, we will be the next government. I want to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that this constituency is a good constituency. I consider St. George North as the finest set of people in this whole island. But I want to say to you that we have our challenges too. We have our challenges right here at Lewis State. And I recall that in 1994, the Sandyford administration asked the tenants at Lewis State to pay $7 a square foot for their land. The tenants objected and they kicked up a storm. I intervened at the time and we were able to schedule Lewis State as a plantation tenantry. That was the promise. In 1995, we scheduled this plantation as a tenantry, and people were able to buy the land at 10 cents a square foot. Yeah. And there, you look around Lowe Estate today, you'll see tremendous development taking place, all because of the Tenantry Freehold Purchase Act that was done by the great Tom Adams. And of course, tonight, we celebrate that his death 33 years ago, it was a sad occasion, but he was a great leader. Today, on the eve of another, of another election, the Stuart administration, and we are presiding over a problem in Lewis State, a dump that we need to get rid of. I want to say to you tonight, that this activity at Lewis State Quarry is causing much pain and suffering. Residents, business, visitors, and shoppers have problems. At times, especially at night, there's severe stench, causing burning in the eyes, watery eyes, asthma attacks. At times, the dump just burn uncontrollably. Persons have to literally shut their houses and be like prisoners in their own home. At Airy Hill, the stench was even worse a couple months ago. And we must salute Mr. Ian Proverbs, who called the media and asked for attention to be drawn to what is happening at Lowe Estate. The smell that was being experienced here was far and wide, as far as Claremont and Warren's. And I want to thank the residents of Lowe Estate who came out to the, various, to the various meetings to discuss their problems. I want to thank them. And the residents here have asked government, why have you taken so long to address this situation? 
the government is sitting down while all around us burn. And we see what is happening across Barbados tonight, not only in Lowest State, but also in other parts of Barbados. In the South Coast, there's raw sewage in the streets. Kowich, blowing all around in rural areas, causing schools and businesses to close. We are losing lots of productive hours because of these problems, and they must be addressed. In Barbados, lawlessness prevails. People can dump anywhere with little is being done. What is this government doing to help the citizens of this country? Law-abiding citizens, we are saying to you tonight that we believe more can be done. I am saying to you that we have much to talk about tonight. In this constituency, which is a rural constituency, even though it has some urban features, there's too much lots that are overgrown with bush. Bush and monkeys, rats and centipedes. We have to be able to control what is happening in this constituency. The government takes too long to deal with anything. Complaints are not rectified. I want to thank the Church of God at Salters for allowing us, especially the Reverend Aline, Reverend Aline. And I want to say to you tonight that we must continue to press on because we have formed a meeting and a committee here at Lowest State to deal with these matters. The ministry officials, inspectors came out, but very little has happened. A deadline was given on the December the, 20, the 31st for the developer to clear out the quarry. This has not been done. So that while the quarry burns and smell continues, the resident suffers. And we are saying to you that we believe that more can be done by this government. Very little is being done to solve the problem at Lowest State. The residents are enjoying this problem. I want to say to the residents of Lowest State, this is indeed a nightmare. I also want to thank my leader who came up here several months ago to talk to the committee and offer her support. Mayor came up here to the Church of God and spoke to the residents here that we know there's a problem and we have to solve it. We spoke to the minister. We spoke to people in authority, but nothing has happened over the past three or four months. I believe that a government has a responsibility to keep our environment free of pollution. The Ministry of Health and the Environment must be responsible for managing the clean up, the cleanup of the site. The people of Lower State pay taxes. Illegal dumping in neighborhood is unfair and unlawful. This madness must stop. We want the government to do something about this. I want to give the people of Lower State, Parsland and Salters the pledge that a Barbados Labour Party government will enforce the law and a sign and a site here will be cleaned up. In fact, I want to give the people of Lower State and Salter the pledge that all the remaining lands at Lower State will be acquired by the government of the Barbados Labour Party to provide for housing and agricultural development and of course for farming instead of courage, bush, rats, and monkeys. We have to understand that this is serious business. The people of Lower State have suffered too much, and we must bring some end to this. A BLP government must not only ensure the cleanup of lands all across Barbados, but fallow lands in St. Thomas, 
fallow lands in St. John must be returned to suitable cultivated agricultural lands. It must be. Agriculture must be at the forefront of a new development within Barbados. I therefore thank the lower state petitioners, started by Roger Craig, Adrian Farley, Ian Proverbs, Jason, and the others who have done a very good work so far. But I want to say to you tonight, the agriculture program under the Democratic Labour Party has been a dismal failure. You can imagine, in 2007, we were producing 30,000 tons of sugar. By 2016, we were only producing 6,000 tons. In 2017, it moved to 12,000 tons. This year, sugar is expected to produce 14,000 tons. And I'm saying to you that if we are supposed to move back sugar production to 40,000 tons of sugar, we have to bring more land back into production. What about the sugar factory at Andrews? Tonight, we have a sugar factory at Andrews that this lawless government wanted to, produce, wanted to pay 500,000 US dollars to, to build. I want to ask the government, I, I, I want to ask the government, what will you do with this sugar factory when you're only producing less than 12,000 tons of sugar per year? You are paying 500,000 US dollars to produce a sugar factory for less than six to 12,000 tons of sugar. It is madness. I am satisfied that we have to plant more acres. And you know, what this lawless government has done. When you look at what they have done in agriculture, you see a situation where 20 acres of land at the river was planted in River Tambourine at the Bell Plantation. This is indeed a lawless government. You cannot plant 20 acres of land in River Tambourine. But do you know what River Tambourine is? River Tambourine is a wild grass. This is stupidity to the highest, only by a lawless, insensitive government. And why they do this? Several young people in the Bell, several young people in Lower State are in need of land, but cannot find any. They want land to raise animals. They want, they want land to raise crops, cassava, potatoes, yet nothing is happening. I want to say, to you tonight, that under the Democratic Labour Party, there's no hope for you. Under the Democratic Labour Party, there's no hope for you. Unemployment will remain high. You have a situation tonight where boys and girls leave school with little hope. And I believe the time has come for us not only to provide hope for the young people, but also to look at our curriculum within the school system. It was drawn to my attention that you're trying to put too much in the school curriculum, but boys and girls are leaving school without certification. We have to stop the madness. I believe that we have to reinforce education in this country. We have to, educate, we have to enforce what is happening within our school system. Education at the university we realized it was free. The Democratic Labour Party decided that education in the university should you have to pay for. Several persons within Low State, several persons within St. George North have complained to me that they cannot send their children to university because of the Democratic Labour Party policy, where children are now have to pay tuition fees. Some have to pay as much as 9,000, 10,000, where are they going to get the money from? We have, we have said to you that we will restore that position where persons will be able to go to university free without paying fees. It must be. We have not only to encourage people to go back to university, but vocational studies must be introduced. Several young guys in this constituency 
And when you see them on the block, when you see them on the block, do not be scared of them. Just say to them, better will come under the Barbados Labour Party. I am saying to you that several youngsters, both boys and girls, remain on the block because they need the education that we are supposed to provide to them. Some of them cannot get into the polyclinic, cannot get into the vocational training board, cannot get into university. What do you expect them to do? Better has to become of, this, of what is happening in Barbados. We have to improve the education system in Barbados at this time. And when you look at the situation across Barbados, the transportation, do you realize that transportation is in a mess? When they left the Ministry of Transport, we were having over 180 buses. Tonight, you only have less than 60 buses on the road at any one time. People simply cannot get from work to home or home to work. It is a problem. It is madness on the Democratic Labour Party. And rural people are suffering. And you know what this lawless government did? This lawless government decided to buy 40 engines, 40 bus engines that cannot fit a single bus. This is the problem that we have in Barbados. And I want to ask, I want to ask the Minister of Transport, where is the 40 buses, the bus engines? What are you going to do with them? You have a problem. What are you going to do with them? People cannot get home, but you have pure confusion within the transport sector. I want to say to you that we are paying more taxes. You have not received a pay hike of in almost 10 years. While this is happening, the standard of living of every Barbadian has dropped. People cannot get and cannot make ends meet. You have a situation where every household, the standard of living has declined. People are feeling the pinch. Everyone is worse off tonight than you were in 2007. In 2007, we had reserves of $2.7 billion. Tonight, we have reserves of less than $300 million. You have a problem. And the Democratic Labour Party has carried this country to its knees. I want to say to you, the Democratic Labour Party has raped this country. They has raped this country. And they're reminding me of the colonials of Latin America who raped not only the entire Latin America, but set out to rape those persons, other countries in North America as well. The Democratic Labour Party can be regarded as those thugs of Latin America who rape the countries. I am saying to you tonight that the economy of Barbados is in the worst shambles. I am saying to you that this government has to do more, has to do better. Any government coming out of the Democrat Labour Party has to take a pause and clean up the dirty mess that we will find. I am saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, this must be taken seriously. Our future, our future, and your children's future must be taken seriously. I want to say to the people of Lewis State and the people of Barbados, this is serious business. My father and his, my father, father, was able to pass on to us something. I want to ask you the serious question tonight. What do you have to pass on to your children after the Democratic Labour Party? What it is that you have to pass on to your children? You cannot pass on education. You cannot pass on wealth. What it is that you have to pass on to your children? And we have a situation where everything seems to be in confusion on the Democratic Labour Party. We have a situation where this country is now regarded as the 21st corrupt country in the world. Can you imagine that? When I heard that a couple of days ago, it almost stunned me. Barbados is now among the corrupt countries in the world. This cannot be fair. There was a time when we were batting like sobers. We were doing well. A former UN secretary said that this country was batting above its means. And today, what do you have? 
We are the laughing stock of the entire Caribbean. And you know, when you heard Thompson, when you heard Thompson said several years ago that he was going to kill the fatty calf, you, the people of this country laughed. He did kill the, the fatty calf. And what do we have? The fatty calf was divided among the DLP supporters. And what do you have tonight? A country that is reeling under poverty. I say to you that hardship abounds. There's tremendous hardship in this country. Some children cannot go to school. Some children go to school and come back and find cupboards empty right here at Low Estate. I have passed homes of old people that cannot be fixed. I have passed homes of young people that need fixing. The Democratic Labour Party has not done anything in this constituency for over 10 years. And it burns me because when I came to, when I came to office in 1994, I pledged to the people of St. George, I will do my best at all times to make sure that this people do not laugh at the people of St. George. And we developed this constituency more than ever. We were able to put in five housing areas, a police station, a resource center, an agriculture market, rows after rows we were able to do. Within the last 10 years, nothing has happened in St. George. Very little. And when you look, when you look, and of course jobs, we provide jobs. There were not, there were not unemployment. People were working. People were working. But the Democrat Labour Party came to office and sent home many people. It is unfair. It is unfair. I want to say to you tonight, my opponent, I heard it I call his name. I don't usually call my, my opponent's name. I have never called my opponent's name. Has done very little in the Ministry of Education. He has never asked a question about St. George. Never asked for any project. I want to see the people of Sheffield because this meeting was done, was called here tonight because we recognize the Democrat Labour Party has done nothing in this constituency, especially in Lower State. Right here at Sheffield, a hard court was to be built. People were relocated. Some people were relocated. My friend Ian Carter, God bless her, she died a couple of years ago. But her homes were relocated to Parsland South. And all the houses below there were supposed to be relocated for a hard court. The Democrat Labour Party has stopped that. And people have now started back, moving back on the land that was supposed to move out. I want to say to you, to the people of Lower State in particular, Richie Haynes, in 1998, and I went to Parliament on a particular day and agreed and asked Parliament to agree that Lowe State should be considered for a full development of hard court and lights. We were able to put lights at the Glebe. We were able to put lights at St. Helens. But here, the, first, the people had to be relocated first. The Democratic Labour Party stopped that. They stopped that similar to what they have done at the Glebe. A pavilion was supposed to be erected at the Glebe. The Democratic Labour Party stopped that as well. And Jeff the A should be shamed to come to the people of this constituency and ask for a vote. I am saying to you that hardship abound. But what do you expect? What do you expect from a man who was Deputy Minister or Junior Minister in the Ministry of Finance and he said, he said that Barbados dollar has no value and therefore cannot be devalued. What a waste. This is the type of people we have running this country. We have St. Clair on one hand and Jeff the Ince on the other hand. Who does not know the difference between a physical deficit and a fiscal deficit? He is a madman. I am saying to you that he is not only a cause overrun. He is not only a person who is batting in the wrong institution, but we know that Jephthah is a very lazy man. He's very lazy. And he is coming to run against me. We are going to show him a lesson whenever the bell calls. 
I want to say that we cannot take, we do not take the other two men seriously. We do not take the other two candidates seriously. One is royalty. One says he's uh, something the second or third or fourth. He's third, he's royalty. You only hear about the Tudors and the Stuart. The Tudors, like Henry the Eighth and Henry the Ninth. He is now something the second. And the other one, he feels that he's young and that I should go home because I am too old and I have done my best. That's what he's telling the people. I have done my best. Go home. But I want to say to, the, to all the candidates that we will see. I remember last election. Last election, one of the supporters of Jephthah, when he heard the votes, Clark, 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 he started to feel very badly. He had fought, he fell down, had a bit of smelling salts for him. Right in the conversation. This election, you're going to hear Clark, 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 Clark. And there will be not only smelling salts. We know that there will be more than smell. You're going to need more than smelling salts. I am saying to the people of St. George, stay firm. Stay firm. I am satisfied in my mind that Barbados will remain the same under the Democratic Labour Party. I am convinced in my mind that taxes upon taxes will remain the same. I want to say to you, the Barbados Labour Party has always stand by your side. We will put money in your pockets. We will, again, employ more people. The Barbados Labour Party will do our best to ensure that you have a decent and honest government. I want to tell you, the people of Barbados have hope. I want to say to you that we have a bright, young, intelligent lady in Mayor Motley. I want to say to you that you have seen her operating. A couple nights ago, was astonished. We were looking at some policies and we remain steadfast. All of us, all of our team, up to four o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine this? Our leader was working on your behalf for over 12 hours without sleep. I am saying to you, that woman has stamina. That woman has stamina. And a woman who has brought this party together. This party is more united tonight than it was at any time in my history. I am telling you, I have seen her. And not only this, I have gone to St. John. And I see the people of St. John for the very first time. And Living Mary are following the Barbados Labour Party tonight. I have seen it. I have seen it. I have seen the people of St. John rallying for the first time in red. I was, up, I was up there last night and it blessed my heart to tell the people of St. George that the people of St. John is now talking about victory. Now talking about victory. And we have to redouble our efforts. We have to redouble our efforts. I want to say to the people of Barbados that that's time. I want to say to the I want to say to the people of St. George, stay firm. Mayor will be our next Prime Minister. I want to say to you, she understands the people of Barbados. And I know the road will be hard, the road will be tough. But confidence will return to the Barbados people and we shall overcome. Thank you, good night, and God bless you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your attention, please? The driver of G5859, please remove your vehicle immediately. That's G5859, please remove your vehicle immediately. Thank you.